Wow, good morning, everybody. Good to see everyone this morning. We've got a lot of faces we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, for obvious reasons, this is a farewell kind of uh, service, a, a little memory lane, if you will. Pastor Arlen still has two more weeks, and we've got him locked in, so <laughs> we're not going to let him go anywhere. I had to take my jacket off. I'm sweating through it, running around. We've got a lot of stuff going on, a terrific meal that's been planned and prepared after this service, so make sure you stick around. Uh, shake Brother Arlen and Sister Penny's hands, if you would. What do you think? We ready? Y'all want to stand up and help us sing this song. Let's all go, go down to the river. Oh, there's a man walking on the wall. He will save his soul if you give him control. man walking on the water. Jesus is the man at the river, and he's washing the people's sins away. Come along with me, for I want to see this man walking on the water. He's a seawalker. He's a seawalker. One who died for me, take my hand and follow me. Gonna laugh, gonna laugh, gonna laugh, gonna laugh. Oh, I see I'm gonna laugh. I've had a long, I've had a long, a bad, bad time. It's my sin, they are gone. Ooh, come on, first verse. If you give him control, get ready for the judgment day. Let's all go down to the river. There's a man walking on the water. Come along with me, for I want to see this man walking on Come on, Patrick, play that keyboard a little bit, sir. He's a seawalker, church. He's a seawalker, a blind man healer, leper cleansing man from Galilee. He's a soul saver, the one who died for me. Take my hand and follow me. Gonna last, gonna last, gonna last, gonna last on my sea. Street come bad, bad time, and 
Thank you. You can continue to stand if you want. You can be seated. Pastor Arlen's going to come up and bless us with a song. You can be seated. <laughs> Amen. Nice turnout today. Wow. If I'd have known this would get to church this full, I'd have quit a long time ago. <laughs> well, I should say retired a long time ago. Amen. Uh, we weren't going to do this song, but on the way to church this morning, my wife asked me if we would do this song. And I've learned a long time ago that happy wife, happy life, right? <laughs> Amen. But it really is appropriate. The title of it is Where There Is Faith. And all of this has been about faith. It really has. This whole church has been based on faith. Just like you are, your eternal soul is based on faith. So this song has a special meaning to us. Because it took faith to just step out and say, yes, Lord, we're going to do what you've asked us to do. Amen. I hope you can hear the words of the song. I believe in faithfulness I believe in giving of myself For someone else I believe in peace and love I believe in honesty and trust but it's not enough For all that I believe May never change the way it is Unless I believe Jesus lives Where there
said, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain as he be thou removed and be cast into the sea. It doesn't take great faith. Have faith. Amen. Amen. In Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Brother Ray. Praise God. We're going to sing another hymn. Uh, we've got a little bit of music. Again, this is going to be a little unorthodox uh, service for you. We're going to dedicate a baby and a whole lot of stuff that's going to happen here this morning. So you, you move how the Holy Spirit moves you. If you want to stand up and sing these songs with us, we certainly won't want to get in God's way, huh? Praise God. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Drop in on that chorus, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree. Do that last verse. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved, just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall I shall not be moved just like the tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be just like a tree, just like a tree that's planted by the water. Church, we got to be unmovable. We have to be unmovable in this world we live in. Let's continue to sing. How about a Christmas carol? It's definitely that time of the year, right? How about a little joy to the world? It's what the world needs now, you know? Joy to the world, the Lord is born. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to men. 
His blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love. Thank you. You can be seated. Doing it a little bit differently. I waited a little while. We got a few announcements I want to make. First of all, if you're a first time visitor here this morning, again, we don't want to embarrass anybody, but the rest of the family, we'd like to make you feel welcome. Just raise your hand up in the air real quick. All right. Well, welcome. Yeah, yeah. We got grandkids. We got all kinds of family in. It's good to see everybody here this morning. We're going to start hosting a church. A lot of you have been asking about this, the, the Spanish uh, on the marquee. And uh, we've been waiting to tell you this. We actually thought they would begin after the first of the year. But the, uh, the Lord has put a divine intersection in our path. And, uh, and out of uh, the world came a, a very charismatic evangelical Latin church that approached us about being hosted. And uh, we took ourselves the task to make sure that they were, uh, everybody checks out, if you will. You have to. You have to be careful in the ministry for certain. Uh, we definitely asked for a declaration of faith and made sure that everything that they think and preach and believe in doctrinal-wise is in alignment with us. And, uh, and then we got down to some of the questions. I just want to share this with you because it was really profound how God works. We're like, well, how do you have two churches have church in the same place? Because you know everybody has church on Sunday, right? So we, we, we asked them this question. They said, well, it's okay, Pastor. We want to have church at 3 p.m. on Sunday. And I was like, thank you, Lord. But are you sure this is really what you have in store for Sun City Christian Center? Because they said they want two days a week. And I said, certainly. Um, uh, so what is the second day you would like? And they had mentioned, because uh, I told them, I said, Pastor Roger preaches on uh, 4 o'clock on Mondays. We have Bible study with me. We have men's fellowship once a month with ladies' fellowship. I start telling all these things. And he goes, we want Tuesday. Can we have Tuesday? And I thought, well, Lord, all right, here we go. So uh, it's worked out wonderfully. They start church today here at our, our campus, at our grounds. So yeah, praise God. Um, uh, everybody's checked out. I want you to, to have a really good feeling about this. I think it's going to create a lot of excitement. We've been praying for a youth minister to continue to, to onboard uh, in the hopeful near future, good Lord willing. And we just kind of feel like this is uh, us getting out of God's way. The, uh, just a, another part of the testimony, the, the young lady that uh, is part of the family, it's Pastor Jose and Tamara, and then their kids, uh, Frank and Mary Ellie, which is very dear to me because I have an Arielli as a granddaughter. And uh, they had driven by countless times. And just so you know a little bit of the backstory, they've been turned down by everybody in the community to be hosted, even their own uh, people, you might say. And uh, the story is, as they would drive by back and forth past our church, and their heart would quicken. Uh, something was telling them to stop in and see us, and... Uh, Patrick was there one afternoon and, and received their, their request, and then we started getting really excited about it in the office and then took it before the board, and everything's to go. So they're going to be here this afternoon. They'll normally have service at 3, but I believe it's going to create a lot of excitement for this church. They're infused with a lot of younger families. I believe once a month our plan is to have a, uh, a fused together kind of service, invite them in, and we invite ourselves together, and we really just praise the, praise the Lord, you know? I'm excited. Yeah. Just one more on that. Pray for Tabernaculo de Adoración Renacer. Okay? Maria Teresa, you can help us out with that, sister, right? Yeah, again, just Tabernaculo de Adoración. Just keep them in your prayers. Tonight, right after the service, or excuse me, today, right after the service, don't forget, we're having a wonderful meal that's been prepared next door. Uh, there are a lot of great decorating that's happened. Uh, so we have also have some extra seating outside. Uh, plenty of seats for everyone to sit down and have a meal, break bread with Sister Penny and, and Pastor Arlen on this uh, a celebration of the, the years of humble service 
in the ministry. Next week, Christmas Day, we will be having church as normal. Uh, this will also be Pastor Arlen's last sermon uh, as he will be leaving us, and I will be preaching Sunday mornings there on going into January. I'm very excited about that, so look forward to seeing you guys here. There's going to be a sign-up sheet at the beginning of the year to sign up for new church directory. It's time to get it updated. If you'd like to be part of that and you want your picture taken, your information, uh, your address and what have you, uh, we want to get this updated and have a really good go-to for our brothers and sisters. So again, that sign-up sheet will be back there. And uh, again, look for that in the next few weeks. We've got a lot going on. I know Sister Jamie and I are like, we can't wait until January. So it's, uh, it's exciting. The Lord's really moving. Saturday, January 7th will be Men's Fellowship at 8 a.m. All men are welcome. Come enjoy a great breakfast and a word of the Lord. Um, the brothers, we share testimonies and a lot of exciting stuff happens there. I want to thank everybody that came out for the Christmas program. I want to thank everybody that participated in the program. I want to thank everybody that helped set up in the Christmas program. Uh, all those that served and cleaned up and, and reset everything. Uh, Brother Bill and Mike, our little... Uh, behind the scene guys came up here and, and got us straightened out and there was a, a bunch of cleaning that happened church i think we should just give them a round of applause just encouragement everybody that was involved it's all it's all for god's glory and every one of them have a humble heart and know that so it's, it's good to recognize them that are serving you understand uh i also one last announcement there is no bible study mondays for the next two weeks until January 2nd, I pinned down here. Pastor Roger will resume again his Bible study Monday at 4 in the sanctuary, January 2nd. So if you can, be there. All right, that wraps it up. Bubba? We've invited Bubba to the platform here. He caught me napping. If you have your hymnals, turn to page 318. You know, we're going to share a lot of stories today about Pastor Arlen. I heard one from a person who I shall remain nameless about the fellow that came to the church looking for the father. <laughs> Do you remember that day? Yeah, he was looking for Father Arlen. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Father Arlen. Thanks to, thanks to Father Arlen. A lot of people can sing this song that we're going to sing today. My sins are gone. Amen. Amen. You ask why I am happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. sins are gone. The Lord took full possession. The devil did depart. I'm glad, I'm glad my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, Praise God, my sins are gone. When Satan comes to tempt me and tries to make me doubt, I say, my sins are gone. You got me into trouble, but Jesus got me out. I say, my sins are gone.
sins are gone. You may be seated for a second. <laughs> There's no place like home for the holidays, right? So welcome home. Right. Y'all didn't know we were twins. <laughs> Love you, Brother Steve. I appreciate you. Um, I got to get new material. We've said that before. They know better. We're going to do a song. Uh, we had originally uh, planned that Brother Mike Bice would be here, and I believe his mother had an accident. And uh, he couldn't be here with us today, but we're going to go ahead and sing this song. Mike Bice sang it for a number of years, and we'd always get tickled. Uh, he always seemed to do things in what, like Pentecostal G and be red in the face trying to sing this song. Um, and I, I know there's a lot of people on this stage over the years. Uh, we've been attending this church since, what, baby, 04? And i got to tell you, there's been a lot of people I've called mentors up here. Um, a lot of people, Brother Mike, I looked up to, Brother Arlen, Brother Ronnie. Uh, there's just so many. Uh, you could forget them all. Uh, and uh, they're, They've always had humble hearts. They've always been up here with uh, the intent of being nothing more than someone that continues to water what was already started. They're humble servants of God. And uh, I praise God for them in my life because they were like a small beacon of light through the years that I never forgot what the had been instilled in me many, many years ago. As a young man, I was kind of taken away from a family that was very much involved in church, singing and, and preaching, my Uncle Edmund and what have you. And uh, just to know every time we would come home from the road, I would get a dose of what, what was here and the love that it just exuded from their pores um, in humble service to God. So I'm going to sing this Lighthouse song if I can get it together, and I hope it blesses you. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, oh, it sends out a light, a light that I might see. And the light that shines in darkness now. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, the ship would be moved. And I thank lives around me, they say, tear that old life down. The big ships, they don't sail by this way anymore. There ain't much use in it standing round. But my mind goes back to that stormy night. From that whole lighthouse, still standing on the view, and I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him, for Jesus is the lighthouse. 
from the rocks of sin. Thank you, Father God. I praise you, Jesus. He has shown. Sing that chorus again. And I thank God for the life. Every one of us, every one of us should be in continual thanks to what He did for us so long ago on the cross. He paid a price, He didn't have to pay a price for it. He said, Father, take this from me if it's your will. And He still went to a cross for people that would never believe in Him. People that would never love him, and he still went to the cross. Thank you for being the beacon in our hearts. Thank you for being the light of this world. Where would this ship be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we got a special treat for you. Um, You're going to bring him up? Good. Patrick, come on up here. Thank you. You guys can be seated. Good morning. I, uh, I wanted to bring up uh, something that means a lot to me, and uh, what, uh, what Jesus can do if you turn your life over to him, and uh, he, he can change you from all that darkness and all that filth and garbage that you used to live in, and uh, I'll let my dad tell you, but he, he said it before, he used to be a drunken plumber, and uh, now, thanks to God, he's, he's not, <laughs> but uh, y'all make welcome my dad. You know, my, my mom... My mom, Deborah, tells me that he's a changed man because of her, too, so I gotta... <laughs> All right, come on up, Dan. No, I was just gonna say, for, for many years, Arlen and Ronnie back there have been my mentors. They've been my pastors. So I'm, I'm glad to see now that they have some rest and relaxation and are able to do some of the things, other things that God will call them to do. Amen. But you know what? These two guys here are absolutely wonderful replacements. So I'd like to do a song that we used to do years ago, and it's still true today. If you need Jesus, come see me. Come see these ladies. Come see these. Come, come over here and see these. And many others in the audience today, too. But don't refuse the call of the Holy Spirit. can tell what's deep inside her very cavern. I've only read about their jewels, rich and rare. I've not explored the depths of any ocean. When To be free, to be free. 
everyone for for singing along with us uh, again we've got a lot that's going to happen today i'm going to get out of the way here for just a minute um we don't baptize babies here at sun city christian center we do dedicate them uh we believe that's a personal decision you make when you when you make jesus your lord and savior uh and and you believe and confess with your mouth you believe that he's the son of god and confess with your with your mouth that he's your lord and savior then we believe that you get baptized, but we do believe in raising them up in the way that they should go, right? And that's what this is about. So I'm going to get off here. Pastor Arlen's going to do something really special. Amen. Well, where's little Richard at? The wife and the baby. Why don't y'all come up at this time? Amen. I'll bring a little Elijah. Amen. Get to baptize Elijah. <laughs> or dedicate him anyhow. Y'all might know this lady. This is my wife. <laughs> she was sick there for a while, but she's back with us. Amen. Yeah. Just in time to move. <laughs> and I'm tired, too. <laughs> Amen. We'll give them just a moment to, to get up here. Most of y'all probably think that um, 27 years ago I wasn't doing much, because most of you don't know me prior to that. But 27 years ago I was at another church, it was the Lighthouse Full Gospel Center in Parish, and I was the youth pastor. 10 years ago, yeah. 27 years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She'll keep me straight. And this gentleman, y'all come on up was in my youth group, yeah. Richard. Come on up here. I'm all the way up here. You can see why we call him Tiny. But just last Sunday, his mom went home to be with Jesus. So 
I know it's been a rough week, but you know your mom and the faith she had in Jesus Christ, we know where she's at today, and that is a blessing. Can I, can I share a little story about you, Richard? <laughs> when we were having a bonfire one night years ago with the teens, we were sitting around the fire, and Brother Richard, he was very excited. His mom and dad, it was their anniversary, and their dad was taking her very special place out at the beach, the Braden Beach. And uh, he said, it's a real fest- fancy restaurant out there. I think it's called St. Bernard's. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually Pete Renard's. Amen. But uh, I'll never forget that, brother. That was sweet, though. But sometimes, you know, you think of your ministry just in one church, but it blesses my heart to see him serving the Lord now. Yes. I know he's had a rough time, been shot a few times. Did it like most of us do, like prodigals, we go out there and try the world and see what it's got and find out it doesn't have a whole lot. And uh, so it just it blesses my heart that not only is he knowing, serving Jesus now, but wife and a new baby, yes. and we're going to dedicate this baby to the Lord. Now, it's more about you and this baby than it is about anything. You're all going to promise you're going to raise this baby up to know Jesus. Everything in you, you're going to tell this child about Jesus, Okay. It's your responsibility. God expects that of you. It's a very big responsibility, but it is yours. And we already named it right, Elijah. I like that. Amen. I like First thing we did in this church 27 years ago was dedicate a child to the Lord. That was the first thing we ever did in this church. That child, Marie's nephew, Wayne and Marie's nephew, Brent, is married, has a wife, of course, and He's doing great. He's doing absolutely wonderful. God has blessed them. So we started with a dedication. It looks like we're going to kind of end it with a dedication. Amen. So y'all pray with me as we lay hands on them and dedicate this child. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the miracle of birth. We thank you for the gift of life. So many are counting it trivial today. But, Lord, we look at this little child, and we, we know that it's a gift from heaven. And I pray for little Elijah, Lord, that your hand will be upon him from this day forward, upon his parents, Lord, that they will raise him in the fear and the admonition of you, to know you, to serve you. And that if he ever should depart, Father, he would know from his mom and dad the way that he should go. Just like Richard, from all of his mother's prayers that would pray for all these years and you brought him home. I thank you so much for that, Father. Keep your hand upon this entire family. Bless them like they've never been blessed before. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Love you, man. I wish, you, wish your mom could be here. Amen. Congratulations again. Bless you, sweetheart. Yeah, I'll bring you back up. And just like with Pastor Rick, we ordained him to be a minister here in this church. He's going to need some help. And of course, Patrick is going to come in and be his helper. But not only he just his helper, but one of the ministers in this church. And uh, we're going to ordain Patrick today. And I'd like to do it with not only us up here, but all the deacons, if they can. And their wives, if you can. I know Kip... Uh, Margaret couldn't be with us today, but if all the deacons would come forward and their wives, Brother Ronnie, please, Penny, y'all come on up here. We're going to ordain you. Patrick, especially you, Patrick. (laughs) We've been going to do this, but it was such a privilege knowing that George and Deborah would be here for this because I know they want to be here as we pass the mantle on to another to carry this church forward. This is a very big very big step for Patrick. We've seen God's hand upon his life. Come on up, Pastor Rick. Amen. Got our wives here. Oh, well, I know that. Where's Neil at? There he is, Neil and Connie. Okay. Rick, you're not going to just need Patrick. And Patrick, you're just not going to need Rick. But you're going to need your deacons. You need them. You know, they're not your servants. They're servants of the Lord. But they're here to help you. And they need you to ask them from time to time. Reach out to them. Because you can't do it by yourself. God knows that. That's why he gave us deacons in there. And you have some good deacons that will help you. So don't don't hesitate 
to let them know some of your needs. Absolutely. They're not your lackey. <laughs> no. But they're here to help you serve Jesus. Yes, We're going to pray for you, Patrick. That God would, we know his hands on you. That his anointing would continue. We're going to ordain you as a minister of the gospel to serve the people here at this church and those outside of this church, in this community, wherever God should lead you. Amen. Amen. It's for his glory and it's for his honor. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. I love this man. I've known him since he was a young boy. And God, I've seen him also with his trial with the world go out there and see what was there. And he found out the same thing as Richard found out. There's really nothing there. It's just glitter. It's just glitter. It's, it's just lies. And Father, thank you for his praying parents who have brought him to this place. Those in this church who have prayed for Patrick, we see your hand and we believe in the power of prayer. And now your hand is upon him. He's answering the call that's been on him since he was just a little lad. And Father, I pray your anointing to continue and to get greater, just like Elisha. He got the double portion, Father, upon him, Lord Jesus. God, I pray for uh, stamina, for endurance, Lord. This is a long, this is race. It's not a short dash. So I pray for him, Lord God, that you give him the patience he needs to be a, a minister of the gospel. The love in his heart, God, to be a minister of your gospel. But most of all, his love for you to continue, Father, deep, deep in his heart. We believe you have sent him here. We believe it with all of our heart. And we're giving it to you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Love you, Patrick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is your, this is your certificate. Thanks. You're official. Amen. Thank Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can be seated. I believe they're going to show a side show. That's easy for you to say, a slide show, <laughs> not a side show, even though it may be somewhat <laughs> of a side show too. Amen. We don't know. I haven't seen it, and uh, I'll let Brother Rick take it from here. Yeah, I want to know. Let's go sit down. We've been talking. I'm sorry. Let me get out of your way. Yeah. All right. Love yuns. They've got me talking like them too. Love yuns. Um, we are, we're going to show a little slideshow that uh, we reached out about, uh, I don't know, four days ago, you know, plenty of time. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we had talked about it for a couple of weeks and then uh, it's been a very busy month, a lot of things happening. Uh, the flooring got done in the fellowship hall, praise God. Uh, a lot of stuff happening. Uh, Sister Bonnie, I meant to say earlier, we love you. We know you're back there sequestered, and, and no, we're social distancing, but we just want to let you know it's so awesome to see you here this morning. We love you. Um, that's my one ADD moment for the morning, okay? Um, so anyways, about four days ago, we realized that we weren't possibly going to be able to get anything done towards the... Uh, I looked over at Patrick... And uh, he was just starting to download the, the software for putting the movie together. <laughs> Got about 15 pictures in. I was like, oh, man. So uh, we called an audible. And I just want to give her a mention, uh, Wendy, um, who kind of put it together for us. And we're so grateful to you, ma'am. We love you. And I know you've got to get on a road and take a trip. But I wanted to give you some recognition for throwing it together. It's a, it's a trip down memory lane. Uh, a lot of years. Uh, I've been attending this church since '04. And uh, I've learned the years before he came, him and Sister Penny, and built this church and, and the total ministry. So uh, I've been excited. I know when we built this second half, I, I can say we now. I think Kimberly and I, we, we were helping, and we got a chance right on the brick on the other side of that. You can't see it. But a lot of people wrote their names on these walls that took part of seeing this expansion happen. So uh, I'm just extremely thrilled that the Lord has me up here on the stage. I know Patrick uh, taking over, but without any further ado, it's not about us. It's about them. Let's go ahead and play the slideshow, please. It's been a lot of tears, been a lot of tears. Oh, and every now and then there's been some pain. Storms be bare, oh, but he has always stayed the same.
And the face of fear He's always near Oh, and every thought I pray He always heard When I've lost my place He helps me find His grace Oh, and He has always kept His word Watch 
You just better grab the Kleenex right now, sir. We, <laughs> Pastor Arlen's going to share a few minutes here um, to, to kind of bring the, the service full circle. But before he does, um, I know that Patrick and I uh, stand before you charged with um, leading this church in the, in the next steps that God has in store for it. And we take it pretty serious. Uh, we know that what the Bible says about uh, ministers that, that get up and start teaching and preaching the Word, that they'll be held more accountable. And we take that very serious as well. But I, can't, but I can tell you from, a, from an earthy, over the last, uh, I don't know, 18 years or so that we've been coming here to this church, I said it earlier as we were singing, uh, I've looked up to a lot of the men and women that have been uh, up here and, and an integral part of me raising my family in this church We've called it home again since '04, and we would come in from uh, the road and, and get recharged and restored and then take off out on the road. And it, it just meant so much to me. We would often talk about Pastor Arlen and Sister Penny and, and 
Pastor Ronnie and Sister Bonnie, and uh, I always looked to them as uh, the example of what I was supposed to model after. They, they, there may be stuff in their life that they would look at me and say, hey, maybe there's another. But to me, I, I always felt that you could see God uh, in them. And uh, I praise God for everything that you've uh, imparted on me over the years. The, um, just preaching the cross, you feel like you know somebody. He, uh, he shared some of the intimate moments of his services, uh, his family, the growing up process. Um, he tied tomatoes to steaks. Uh, he often uses the word put in because he's an avid fisherman, him and Sister Penny, uh, in his sermons. And there's just so many things that I've gleaned over the years that I will never, ever forget, Pastor Arlen. Um, we appreciate you and we love you to the high heavens. I'm going to let you try to talk now because i got to blow my nose. <laughs> Anybody want to touch this microphone up here? I promise I'm allergic to cats. I'm not having a corona fit up there coughing. But, uh, you know, oh, boy, you guys are crying again. Stop crying. One thing uh, that I'll try to mumble out here is, uh, whew, how'd you do that? Uh, one thing I'll mumble out really quick uh, before I lose it again, but Arlen's dad, I, I used to play golf with him a lot, and uh, he'd always tell me, keep on keeping on. Keep preaching the cross. <laughs> what was that? Sorry. I must have indigestion. Sorry. But uh, preach the cross, and that's what Arlen's done, and, and that's what we all need to do to our families and friends, and uh, he'll, he'll get us through. I think that should be enough. Sister Jamie, you want to come up here? Pastor Arlen, Sister Penny, come on up. Um, you've, you've given us so much over the years. The, we, we couldn't possibly think of what to get you for a parting gift other than something that you could place in a, in a special part of your new home. Yeah, a million dollars. Uh, we're going to take up a love offering. Uh, <laughs> um, we couldn't think of anything... Uh, more poignant for us just to give you just a keepsake. We know those kind of things are sentimental to you over the years. Uh, and it just, it just something that you can put someplace special in your home. It really is fancy. It's like one of those music awards that they give around or something like that. But um, put that someplace special and just know that you have imparted on us so many wonderful things um, from the scripture, from just being a, a good God-fearing human being, both of you. And we just love you so much. And uh, we're going to miss you. And wow. Um, I tried to have keys made, but he's not going to take him right now to give him permission to come back anytime he wants. Um, <laughs> but just know that we, we hope to see you in the future and come back and uh, impart on us a, another word of God and from time to time and share with us. We're going to, man, there's just seems like there's just such big shoes to fill. But I know that all things are possible through Amen. him. And that's one thing that you've always instilled in us. And I'm, I'm just super grateful for both of you. I love you. Love you too. Thank you, brother. Patrick, love you, brother. Love you. Love you, too. No crying, Jamie. <laughs> they asked me to talk, and I said no, I'd be a blubbering idiot. <laughs> Here, baby, take this. We love you. Okay. We're going to sit down now. Pastor Arlen's probably going to say a few words, and, and then uh, we'll be dismissed and go yeah. next door. Well, I think they have a meal prepared next door, so I'm not going to keep you but just a few moments. I'm not going to be able to thank everyone for the last 27 years, and uh, I know I'll miss some people. But uh, there were some businesses around the area that I do, would like to mention that helped us uh, out. Lysi Shell Pit in Ruskin, uh, the Calusa Shell Pit, same Shell Pit in Ruskin, Bud Lysi, uh, Bill Casey, Eric Hunter. They donated so, donated so many tons of dirt and fill and shell to get this thing going didn't charge us anything for us gave us the big tank you seen when you drove up drove up and uh would have cost us thousands and thousands of dollars uh they gave that to us and helped us out tremendously so i did want to mention them john moore has helped us so many years through the years with all of our flooring i want to give a shout out to him also any business that had anything to do with this church very important very important to us because we couldn't have done it without it. But more than anything, 
all the people that God has sent through this church over the years. Appreciate you so much. I look out, and I see some old faces, Sister Duran, not old people. <laughs> <laughs> She'll get me for that. <laughs> but people that were with, with us from the very beginning, and uh, it seems like just yesterday we began this church. And, uh, but it's time. The old song says, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And, and I think it is time to, to move out of the way and let God have his way with a new direction for this church. Uh, we've honored to have served here for these past 27 years. Um, we will be back from time to time. These guys will want to take a vacation every once in a while. They may need a, a preacher to fill in. Who knows? You know, Brother George may come down for them. <laughs> Amen. But thank all of y'all for, for being here today. And uh, it really is an honor. It's kind of a hard thing to put into perspective. It really is. Um, it's not the way I thought things would end, to be honest with you. You may have heard me, some of you through the years. I wanted to go out like Elijah in a flame of fire flame of fire. That's the last thing I wanted to go out is in a whimper. But, you know, you get older and you kind of whimper out a little bit, don't you? <laughs> Amen. But God knows what he's doing, and he's, the timing has been perfect. The way he brought Rick and Patrick together, and it's just all, you can see God's hand in it. So, But please, during this transition, there's going to be some difficulties. There's going to be some things that are different. So don't, don't get all upset, okay? Don't start calling me on the phone. Because I've been seriously thinking about turning my phone in. So I don't know. <laughs> Amen. But uh, you've meant the world to us. Many, many are not here today. They're in heaven. There's over 100 people back there on those plaques that came to this church, including my mom and daddy. And uh, wish they could be here today. Um, but of course they can't. They're in heaven. But there's one other guy that's not here today that his wife walked in. My cousin, Jimmy Lowry, we were best of friends growing up. I wish he could be here today. He helped me so much in getting this church started when it was in my home. He would share his chairs that he was out in the street ministry doing. And every Sunday, he would come over and bring chairs and help me set up for church before any of you all knew anything about this church. Brenda, I love you. Chris, I love you. We continue to pray for your family. Love all of you here, and I know you're hungry, so uh, Penny loves me <laughs> after all this time. And, uh, but the scripture where Jesus said, when you've done what I've told you to, consider yourself, what? An unprofitable servant. And in humility, I feel that way because I know the work's not finished, but God's going to continue it through some other people. Amen. So please pray for Patrick and Rick. Their families, they're going to need it. Deacons, get behind our new, our new leaders here in this church. And pray for Jamie. You can't imagine how hard it is to be a church secretary in these days. Amen. Bonnie was kind of the rock in the office. And Jamie's going to have to be the rock in the office. And I think she's going to find out it's more difficult than you think. Amen. So pray for the entire team. Brother George, good to see you and Deborah really is. It brings back so many fond memories. And if anybody needs to see Jesus, I'm going to send them to Virginia. Okay? <laughs> to come see you. Why don't we stand up and be dismissed in order? And we'll go next door and have fellowship. We can share special moments and things like that. Please, even if you're a visitor, please feel welcome to stay and have a meal with us in our celebration and uh, in time of celebration. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you for today. Thank you for your faithfulness through all this time. It has been you, not anyone else, Father, that has brought this to this place. And we know that your faithfulness will continue this work. Even though Penny and I won't be a part of it so much anymore, we know that the work will go on. We have planted some seeds here. We started this church. We've got it to where it's at now. And, Father, I believe you want to take it to the next level through these new ministers. And we release it to you, Father, by faith. We know that years from now, we will look back and understand what you were doing. Many won't understand right now. So I pray for them, Father, that you would just give them the patience, the understanding that there will be some changes, but they'll be for the good. 
Go with us now as we go next door. Bless those who have prepared this food. This week they have prepared the buildings. They have done so much work, Father. And this church would not be here were it not for volunteers. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for each person who made this church happen. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The line may get long. I'm not sure. But please feel welcome to come and share a meal with us. You are dismissed. God bless you. Judy, there you are.